This is Bill Bright with Gallup Solar, and this is Solar 101 Electric Current. I'm uh, tag teaming tonight with uh, Pam Maples. We haven't seen either one of our presentations, and that's on purpose so that uh, we don't, in, you know, we have a completely different approach to life anyway. And uh, I'm going to bore you with some uh, lecture, so to speak, not too boring, hopefully. And I understand Pam, uh, last I heard, was going to beat you over the head. Uh, with a, a water hose or something like that. But either way, hopefully by the end of the hour, I'm going to try to keep mine to 30 minutes, that uh, you'll really have an appreciation for electric current. This is most important for understanding photovoltaics and solar panels uh, because it's, it's the basis. And as I, as I will try to emphasize tonight, it's really the basis of life itself. So with that, I want to go ahead and introduce the, uh, the concept with a few slides, very simple. And this is how solar electric current works. Any questions? <laughs> uh, we, you said we had the challenge of making it very simple. And so uh, I, I picked this uh, glyph from the internet to basically get down to the root cause and they have to do with atoms. I know none of you have seen these things. I hope that everybody here is okay with accepting the possibility that all life is made up of little tiny particles inside of us and outside of us in the whole universe, atoms. And these uh, particles, we do have a, a kind of a preview of it, I think, I'd like to think of it, and that's the uh, solar system. Our sun is the nucleus there, and those electrons going by are our planets. So to me it gives you kind of a, an interesting uh, uh, macro view of something we can't see in the microcosm. But basically this is it. Imagine these electrons being, of course, many, many, many millions and zillions in a small uh, place, in a wire, or in our body, or whatever. And that little electron moving from one energy spot to another is basically current and it adds up if you get so many of them it adds up to a potential amount whether it's uh, 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 in our body or whether it's uh, lightning which we see quite a bit of around here and really that's all there is to it uh, I, hap I did pick two different types of uh, atoms here one that has a different uh, number of electrons than the other but there's no, no particular designation here as to what element they might be. But this is important to remember for a later lesson because when we study how PV works, uh, we'll see this again, that there's two different elements in the periodic table that are side by side with the barrier between them and the sun causing this, uh, this flow. So you'll see more of this later in a later presentation. So uh, that's the basis of what we're talking about. Now, it just turns out that in the 1800s, when the science was really getting started, there was all kinds of excitement and experimentation and wonder and wonderful thoughts uh, coming about having to do with electric current. And uh, it's not that long ago that people just didn't have any idea. And it just turns out, this is an international experience, uh, and in France, there was a man, last name Ampere's, who was given credit arbitrarily by the scientific community at that time for the concept of a certain amount of electric current. There's actually another uh, person, Coulombs, I believe he's French also, that actually came up with a number of how many gazillion electrons <laughs> moving through a particular uh, space cre creates one amp. Ampere is amp is short for amperes. Ampere, and I don't know. Yeah, don't ask me how I figured that out. But we don't need to worry about that. It's an arbitrary measure of a certain electric electric flow. It's important when we get to sizing our PV panels that we understand this concept of an amp being a certain uh, flow of electrons from through the from the atoms. Now you might ask, why is why and are the electrons flowing from one to another? And that, that would be the, uh, the, next, the uh, next example. 
And from there, oh, got this in the wrong order. Next, from there, we have to fly uh, to uh, Italy. And then last name, uh, uh, and a scientist, another scientist working at the same time, last name Volta, has been giving credit to the answering the question of why electrons flow. Well, there's a potential set up somehow for various reasons, whether it's static electricity from lightning, whether it's chemistry in our body, photovoltaics, which they didn't, they didn't know about at that time. Something creates a potential, a, a, a charge, a negative and a positive. And you'll see these negative and positive later when we get into uh, designing photovoltaic systems. They're an important concept. Something, something, various things can create a, uh, a charge, basically a potential. Something that makes these electrons want to move from one place to another. And without that, they, you know, why would they move? So you, we need to understand that's simply, quite simply, a volt. So that, now we have an amp. Now we have a volt. And that begs another question. Why does, is, does it flow all the time? Why are some substances, uh, copper wires, things flow better than other kinds of wires and materials? Why is, why is there a difference in the flow of the amps when you have the same volt uh, you know, in it? And that has to do with, uh, we have to take another trip now uh, to Germany, last name, uh, scientist, the same time period, last name Ohms. He's given credit to the idea, well, there's resistance, different amounts of resistance with different elements. And these, these two atoms are picked because they're very similar. There's not a whole lot of action going on. They have no reason. Uh, they're ho kind of holding up the idea of uh, ch changing electrons. There's too, too much resistance. So it's that simple. Now we have three things, three key concepts to remember. And what we have is Ohm's Law. Now we have something that science can work with. And we will work with this in the later uh, lessons on, on, on designing photovoltaic systems. We need to know this uh, law and its relationships. And some people, some people like to use this triangle as a way of remembering it. I remember seeing this. Uh, by the way, um, my introduction to electric current was uh, courtesy of uh, a uh, free class for one year class in Denver, courtesy of the United States Air Force. And so I had a whole year of a wonderful experience really in, in, in the classroom learning electric theory as well as a m number of other things uh, in the Air Force. So this relationship of Ohm's Law is something we will actually utilize. This is a little bit of math, but it's something that we will need to have in your, in your be able to do when we calculate size of wires, various things in our photovoltaic systems. And let's say we have a battery that's one volt in the first example, and we have a, a multimeter. Now that's another, I hope we'll have something on multimeters later. It's a simple little object that you can pick up very reasonably from any in a radio shack or anywhere else, and it'll measure volts, amps, and ohms. And so it's something uh, you, we actually use in the field. It's very handy. So we're now we have this volt, uh, multimeter. We have a one volt uh, battery uh, through, let's say, some kind of wire. And we read that one amp of current is moving through that. All those electrons that somebody said is an amp is moving through there. Well, the law is, well, that, that must have one ohm of resistance. It's that simple. If one volt is hooked to a certain uh, conductor and you read one amp, and automatically, that's how they figure that must have one ohm. So from there, you can take a little bit of simple math here and say, well, we still have a one volt battery. We hook it up uh, to a different kind of wire, let's say gold, and we get two amps flowing through there with our meter. So what happens? It must have only half an ohm. You know, it's just simple math here because it, it's, it's conducting better. And that's true of uh, various elements. They have different levels of resistance. Down here, the opposite is true. We still have the one volt battery. We only get a half an amp. It's some kind of a, a, a metal that uh, not very good at conducting, and we only and you only get half an amp. Must be two ohms in that in that 
in that metal. And so maybe you wouldn't want to use that. This is critical later as we calculate the voltage drop between our photovoltaic panels going into the house with, with going through copper wires usually. And we need to be able to prove to the inspector that there won't be enough resistance and, and voltage drop to, to make the system where the system won't work. The inverters, the battery chargers, and so on, they just don't, won't, you know, we have the voltage out there at the panels. Or we run through these wires and the thing doesn't work. Well, there was too much of a drop because we didn't ha have the right size wires, uh, you know, the right size of the copper wires. So that, in essence, is what Ohm's Law is about. Now, somewhere along uh, a little later, the in, in the early 1900s, we had a whole concept. And we're, from here, we're going to fly to Scotland. A man whose last name, sorry, these are all men. I'm sure women actually did all this, but the men get the credit, as usual. But this uh, gentleman in Scotland, last name Watts, there, it was part of a whole movement to understand power. That was the, the time, you know, we were, we were looking at horsepower. You've heard about horsepower in your car your vehicle. At that time, horses were providing all the power. And so there was an actual formula made based on how much a horse could pull to come up with the concept of horsepower. Well, same thing with electricity. To be able to calculate these things and figure out what kind of work they can do, we need to figure out what kind of power is inherent in elect electric current. So basically, this is easier math. One amp times one volt equals one watt. And, and that's basically something we can work with. You'll, you know about watts because you've all changed the light bulb and you've seen that there's so many watts, 60 watt, 100 watt. That's the idea how much power they're going to need. And later on, as we calculate uh, off-grid houses, basically we need to look at all the labels and the wattage of the various machines and devices. Uh, we've asked uh, people to, to fill that out on a form how many hours are they using the, these wattage? How I s otherwise, how can we figure how many panels and how many batteries are going to be uh, so they don't run out of power every day? <coughs> so that works. In, that simple math works in uh, uh, much simpler ways. Let's say we have one amp and two volts. It's two watts. It's just a simple mathematical change. And what's interesting, it works the opposite, just the opposite. If we measure two amps and only one volt, it's still two watts. This is just multiplication. Amps times volts is watts. And then we can use watts uh, as, a, as a concept when we calculate sizing later on. You'll appreciate this. Now, I want to emphasize there's some discussion and some f healthy fear about electricity in our populations and our cultures of the area. And you've all heard the term that water is life. It's a wonderful, uh, wonderful expression, very true. But water, when it comes down the arroyo, can be also be deadly. And same thing with electricity. I say that let's, let's start the uh, new uh, concept tonight. Electricity really is life also. And much, very, just as important as water. Uh, you can live for several days without water. But I, I su submit to you, you won't live for a few minutes without electricity. We have one member of our audience who has a pacemaker uh, that he showed me last week. And without that extra jolt of electricity to his heart, it could be, you know, life-saving. And, and we all have that pacemaker naturally within us, normally if it's working. And so our heart won't beat without that electric current telling the heart to beat and to pick up the beat when we exercise. So while you're watching this, the transmission of the visuals to your brain is going through neurons because of electricity. So I'd like to get everybody to embrace the concept that electric current is absolutely necessary for life. Nothing to be afraid of. We're not going to go out, stand outside during an electric storm, but we're, I think, to really appreciate that electricity is inside of us and outside of us and everywhere. <laughs>